Yo, what's good Spirit Squad? It's your boy Dre, and now that Keldheim is out and has been out for about a week now, we have seen yet another huge shift in the modern metagame. And we're definitely going to talk about the changes to modern, the newest elephant in the room, and how we as Spirits pilots get to adjust. So, the first thing we are going to talk about is going to be the elephant in the room as far as modern is concerned, and that is Tybalt's Trickery Combo. So, the deck itself is pretty simple. You cast a Violent Outburst, Violent Outburst will spin you into a Tybalt's Trickery, Tybalt's Trickery will counter the Violent Outburst, and you get to do a Fusion Dance to an Emrakul. That's the whole combo. That's all the deck does. But, you get to play Gemstone Caverns and stuff, so you can do this as early as turn 2 if you're on the draw. The rest of the deck, however, is 51 lands, because all you're playing is 4 Violent Outbursts, 1 Tybalt Trickery, 4 Emrakul, that's the deck. And because you have 51 lands, you get to choose how you want to configure those lands. Some people are playing things like Field of Dead in Valakit so that they can sideboard into a whole transformational Dryad plus Titan combo deck. Some people are playing a Mystic Sanctuary package so that if they have something discarded from their hand, they can just put their combo back on top of the deck. There's a lot of options that people have available, right? And honestly, by the time you watch this video, there's probably going to be yet another version of the deck. So... That's going to be one of the combos that's presented by this set. There's another silly combo presented by this set too. And this is where people who like playing Jund cards on purpose can actually do so without being embarrassed again. You don't have to go, oh, well, Tarmogoyf kind of sucks. Maybe I should play Black Red. No, no, no. You just get to play a real deck again. So this is going to be Jund Cascade. And the funny part about Jund Cascade is that Bloodbraid Elf is probably the worst card in the whole deck. Anyway. <laughs> when you play Jund Cascade, you get to not only play like a traditional Jundi package, you get to play like Liliana of the Veil, vale, you get to play Season Pyromancer, all the cool Jund 2 for 1 stuff, right? But you also get to play Demonic Dread and Violent Outburst, and instead of Tybalt's Trickery, in this deck, you get to spin into the new Valky God of Lies. So you do your Cascade spell, you get to your only two drops in your deck, and that's going to be the Valky, except Valky is a dual-faced card. The back half is going to be a 7-drop Planeswalker, and that's going to be Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter. So you do your Cascade, you see a 2-drop, and the 2-drop is acknowledged for the Cascade mechanic, except you get to choose which end of the card you want to cast. So for 3 mana, sometimes instant speed, bam, 7 mana Planeswalker. And that's also a really powerful thing that comes out of this Cascade package is that are presented by both of these decks. So... Lots of powerful stuff coming from this, right? Um, the cool part about all of this is that we, as Spirits pilots, have all the tools we already need to beat both of these decks. And we're, of course, going to talk about a lot of them because, well, they are different for the two decks, but they still work pretty well. And since there are two different slightly broken decks right now, this also means that we've compiled two, not one, sample games for us to watch and go over the strategy on how we can combat both of these. So, against the hard body Tybalt's Trickery combo, well, really all they're trying to do is resolve one spell. So, that's all we really have to manage most of the time. We have Mausoleum Wanderer to counter the Tybalt's Trickery. We have Spell Queller to permanently kidnap the Tybalt's Trickery. And what I'm doing, you don't have to do this, but what I'm choosing to do right now is I'm also playing three copies of Thalia so that we can make their combo cost five instead of just three. There's also a ton of other hate cards that we as blue and white pilots get to apply. Granted, Bant can play the same cards, but there's no specifically green tools to combat either of these decks, I think. So we're going to talk about just the blue and white options today. But the fact that we have all the tools to beat both of these decks has definitely been showing as far as the metagame numbers are concerned. And of course, Uro is still top dog because... Until Earl is banned, it's probably never going to not be top dog. But, as far as the last week of the meta is concerned, we are all the way up in fourth place. So, we have a crazy win percentage. Like, I've already played a few leagues and stuff, especially so that we can hunt down some of these sample games for us, because, well, gotta get the games from somewhere, right? And, I lost to Elves, and I lost to Black Red Midrange on stream, and I got a little bit bummed because I lost two matches in the same league. And I'm like, well, that kind of sucks, you know. Let's get a little sad face. Let's finish our games out. We got, went 3-2 and two in the league. We opened our pity pack, our chest. 
not booster packs. We opened our pity pack. Um, our booster chest was kind of bad. So we walked out with a little bit of sad face as far as the stream was concerned. And then I looked at all of our matches and realized that over the last week or so, I've got a 70% win average with spirits. Our deck is so good right now that a 70% win rate managed to make me sad. That should probably tell you everything you need to know about Spirits' place in the metagame. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump right into that first match, and that's going to be against the Tybalt's Trickery version. And yeah, check this out. So here we've got a Game 2 against the Tybalt's Trickery combo deck. And we're on the draw. We won Game 1. And our hand is, I'm not going to go as far as to say clunky, but we've got a, a sweet hate card in Mindbreak Trap. We do have a turn one vial. We really want a second land so that we can start jamming our creatures. But other than that, we're pretty good. All right, so they have a basic forest, whatever, fine. There's our second land, so we're pretty happy about this Moral and Haunt. And yeah, we're kind of off to the races here. Alright, so there's Mana Confluence, and that's whatever. So, some of these lists are playing, like, cards that I don't believe people should be playing, but they're playing them anyway. Um, this specific pilot is playing Simeon Spirit Guide. And the reason that we got off a ridiculously easy Game 1 against this specific opponent is because in Game 1, they actually did Tybalt's Trickery into a Simeon Spirit Guide. Granted, we already had a Shackle Geist established and Emrakul was getting tapped every turn anyway, but don't give it to us for free. Um, <laughs> you know, like, guys, at least make us win, like, you know, with real magic cards. So, it's actually pretty interesting that they played Blast Zone. So, Blast Zone against Shackle Geist is something that they basically know they have to do to deal with this. So, realistically, this Aether Vial is about as safe as safe gets, so they should probably tick this up to 2 and then use it to blow up Shackle Geist. Okay, and that's exactly what's going to happen. So we're not going to play the Glass Pool Mimic because we actually uh, drew something that's not CMC2. And because of that, we actually want the Glass Pool Mimic to be able to be either a 3-drop that we draw or, in a hilarious pinch, copy this 1-drop that we already have on the table, either way. But it's serving not much use to us as a land at this point in time. So here we're going to go ahead, swing for 5, see what happens. They do take it and go to 7, but you'll see how they're just really kind of biding their time because, like, if they try to go for it and we have something like a Spell Queller or a Mausoleum Wanderer at instant speed, then it sucks to be them. But, okay, so they're going to go ahead and blow up our two drops. As we said before, the Glass Pool Mimic did get to become this, and they're at three, though. And, and this is kind of a hilarious thought to me, because now they are so desperate that they actually have to tip out trickery or Thalia just to not, like, die to it. And I find that absolutely hilarious. Um, so let's see what happens this turn. All right, so they do draw something, and they go to two. They have the Ardent Plea. Tybalt's Trickery counters Ardent Plea, and that actually was a milled um, um, Ulamog. So that's going to trigger. They're going to recascade, and now they're going to find another Tybalt's Trickery, or the same one again, whichever. There it is, except now they've played a third spell, so we can just Mind Break Trap it, and there's the ball game. So... All it really takes is, like, one hate card that they know pressures their combo, right? Like, this thing is just going to absolutely wreck their um, their Ulamog plan or Emrakul plan, whichever they were going for this specific game. So they had to get rid of this by using the Blast Zone. Like, Thalia was going to hit play after they did the Blast Zone, so, like, they needed to find another solution to Thalia, otherwise their combo was going to cost 5 and cost them 2 life again, while they were being pressured by multiple creatures. And that's really all we need to do there, is just, like, apply some pressure, even if they're just with a couple of 1-drops, because, like, sometimes they will just play the suboptimal lands, like Mana Confluence, and they'll see 1 or 2 of them, and we can just hit them, and they also have to hit themselves just to participate. We got to see a sweet, um, hate card in the Mind Break Trap, where we got to both apply pressure and make sure that we had our defenses covered at the same time. 
Um, and the cool part about Mind Break Trap too is that like, you know, that can counter any number of things too. So like, if they only have like one Ricochet Trap and you Mind Break Trap both to both Trickery and the uh, thing that it's trying to counter, even if they um, Ricochet Trap something, then you probably still get your stuff off. I don't know. I guess they can tip off trickery the ricochet trap itself. Well, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of stuff. Anyway, uh, so that's probably not going to work the way I asked. just said it out loud. So that was probably a mistake. But we were going to draw the spell queller until they tip off trickery to Thalia. We had Thalia. We had a shackle geist. We had another shackle geist to make sure any Eldrazi titans didn't get to attack. Their life total was under pressure. We had things that we needed to have. And that's really all it takes against these decks. Just apply pressure and play a little bit of defense, and we're good at both. Um, so that's going to be, I guess, our little bit on how to help tackle these decks. And as you see, it's ridiculously effective. So even when they get to cast their cards, we still just have a lot of what we need, whether the spell resolves or not. And as always, that's exactly where you want to be in a metagame, is where if they don't do their thing, great, kill them. If they do their thing deal with it and then kill them and we have both of those options covered so that's going to be i guess our little take on tibalt's trickery combo okay so this is going to be a game two against jund cascade and since we won the game one this is going to be us on the draw we got to be on the play game one so that's a lot less um i'm a lot less incentivized to show that one to you because like the advantage from being on the play with a Muslim wanderer against the spell based deck is way way too big to really um i guess be helpful so instead what we're going to show is a game where we're on the draw it's a little bit of a clunker we've got a decent two drop and some good three drops if we actually get there and like i said we know what we're playing against though so we we've got some stuff right so the cool part about playing against this version of the jun deck is that we know this deck does not play any discard spells because they can't they can't cascade into them um so this is kind of sweet though because like we got four of a kind on our friend drog skull captain here not that we ever plan on actually getting all four out against a really fast combo deck but we get to just start jamming cards like we have shackle guys to jam and that may or may not be important but it's a creature either way um and you see where they just start doing tibalt things but we get to resolve akira for the most part, Tybalt's probably not going to do too much of anything again as far as this entire game is concerned. But Tybalt will be able to play cards from both of our Exile Zones, so we should probably have those visible. But check this out. Like, they've got the, the Valky locking up a Skyclave Apparition. They've got Bloodbraid here getting ready to attack. They've got Tybalt at 105 loyalty. But we have Kira, so, like, almost none of their stuff is going to end up being important. And some of that might just be because they didn't actually kill off um, this little Shacklegeist here with Tybalt. But now Tybalt's going to go almost completely ignored. Like, we know full well that all we have to do is untap and play another Drogskull Captain. And that's going to be 4 damage here, 4 damage here, 3 damage here. Oh look, they're at 11. And that's considering the fact that they got to interact with us and do all the stuff that their deck is really designed to do so like they got the fast tibalt on turn three they got the blood braid off into a spell that took out one of our interactive cards in skyclave apparition we kind of got stuck on our fourth land so we couldn't play the one drop we drew so we never got to like take full advantage of our mana we you know we're on the draw um and we didn't even draw any like very specific hate cards just akira that is already in our deck because we're spirits and this is just a you know a, a cool example of how our deck lines up very well a lot of the time against what these very powerful combo decks are doing because like i said even when they get to be on the play they do their thing we don't even counter their cards a lot of the time it just still doesn't matter like this game was never even close and that's kind of the power that we get to tout as spirits pilots right now because like so many decks even when they get to do their thing we just don't really have to care sometimes and that's a really solid place in the meta to be so i think i really like our position against this jund deck and of course against most of the other combo decks that are coming out so now that we've actually seen a sample matchup against both Tybalt's Trickery Combo and Jund Cascade, like I said, we're 
playing just blue and white and we have a ton of tools to be able to help take care of these metas as you guys saw i happen to be playing thalia in my main deck because i'm already i i know that it's good against both of these decks but it's also good against stuff like earl against stuff like prowess so i think thalia just happens to be in a place i like right now but let's be real if y'all have seen really any of my other videos i've been super high on thalia for like two years so take that as you will but whatever i love her she's my boo for other more popular options you can also just play things that are super hard stops to these archetypes right like you can play drandeth magistrate and that makes it so that they can't cast from anywhere other their hands so cascading not a thing you can uh lazinia or lavinia azorius renegade so that anything that was paid for um using anything other than actual mana right so like a cascade condition for example um they will get their ardent pleas and their demonic dreads and stuff like that off but the tip trickery itself wasn't paid for so it's getting countered um also simian spirit guide won't let them do their cool things if they're trying to combo with like only one or two lands because they can't cast cards with cmc more than the number of lands they actually have so that'll also take out jund cascade being able to play flip cup into tip one way or the other um force of negation is just good as always card's great it counters tibolt's trickery on their turn the only real liability behind tibolt's trickery is that if they use violent outburst to combo on our turn then the force will still cost three so be aware of that um mind break trap is sweet but we do need to be aware that while it costs zero against the tibolt's trickery deck it does nothing against jun cascade because all you have to do with jun cascade is play one card be it demonic dread or violent outburst or even a blood braid off if you're lucky into valky valky will flip cup itself that's only two spells so that's going to be i guess your trade-off between playing force and negation versus mind break trap like force and negation is great sometimes but sometimes it costs three and mind break trap is better in some scenarios but it straight up doesn't work against one of the decks so know what you're getting into when you play one or the other um deafening silence is a really sweet option only thing about deafening silence though as we already saw against the tibalt's trickery combo deck is that the deck plays blast zone and they usually play anywhere between two and four so deafening silence already costing one just know that it's only going to take them one turn to deal with that so if you're not really applying pressure then it's not going to help you out too much but as always we couldn't exactly get away from a video without saying something about a throne of eldrain card and the last option i'm going to suggest to everybody is going to be a choice of either like ethos worn canonist or a death and taxes favorite archon of ameria either way it'll make it so that they can only cast one spell per turn and either of these effects are pretty good obviously one flies one doesn't one costs two one costs three etc etc but these are all going to be different ways that we have as blue and white pilots to help combat what these Tibbles trickery and jun cascade decks are doing so now that we have seen some games we know how to tackle these decks and we know about the sideboard options that you guys have to help battle it on your own let me know about your thoughts on this deck have you come across it if so what have you done to beat it or have you lost to it a bunch either way let me know and this is going to keep coming up so as we stream and these are going to happen on mondays wednesdays and fridays at 12 o'clock eastern standard time just let me know exactly what your thoughts on this deck are when you see me play live as well so as always if you like what you're watching just make sure to like the video sub to the channel and i will see y'all on the next one